MaxLMC131 and welcome back to Behind the Blocks in Minecraft 1.10. Yes, I haven't been here for a while. I'm afraid I've been tied down with a lot of projects. Uh, a few of them Minecraft related and I think you guys will approve. Um, but I'll have some more updates on those later. But today I have a video for you detailing this. Something I have actually built um, with no commands. This is something else that I've um, done with zero commands after watching a few of Mumbo Jumbo's redstone videos. And I was inspired by his latest one, at the time of recording at least, which is the um, the latest Piston House video. And he, um, I've been liking the idea of using the pistons as trans... what, is, what does he call them? Translocator pistons? Uh, and you can use this as an elevator. So I have created an infinitely expandable, vertically of course, uh, redstone elevator, which is completely survival friendly as it uses no commands. Uh, and what you got to do is just uh, walk up here, push the up button, and it will pull you up to the uh, next floor. So that was the ground floor down there, and then we go up to the first floor um, because I work that way. So don't hate for me, don't hate on me for calling the second floor the first floor. Uh, and then we can go up again and up again to the third floor, and then we can go down again, and it just drops us down a level. And this system can be expanded infinitely, as high as you want. Obviously it takes more redstone every time you do it. Um, it's not massively compact, but I think it's compact enough. But uh, I'll move over quickly and show you a bare bones version to show you how it works. Okay, so this is a very basic skeleton of a one layer cut out of that uh, elevator system. So this has two floors, a bottom floor and top floor, and a button to go bot to go up from the bottom floor and a button to go down from the top floor. And I've uh, color coded the wiring as I have on the main one over there to show you guys um, basically what's going on. So we've got two circuits here. The green is for going up, the orange is for going down. Uh, so keep that in mind. And what's going to happen here is that when you push this button, there's a dropper here which gets activated, and this has an iron ingot in it, and it will pump it into this hopper, which will then immediately push it back into the dropper. But before it does that, this comparator will output a short signal, powering this redstone repeater here, which then runs up and powers these two redstone dust, and powers those two pistons. So those pistons extend, and then retract, and they pull anyone here up. So you can see that happen if I stand here, and I'm pulled up to the next level. Uh, and that actually works with all... Uh, two block entities I'm pretty sure. If you haven't seen the translocator pistons before, basically if you have a piston that pushes through an entity but the entity is against a wall or a floor or a ceiling, the piston will go through them like so and pull them up when it retracts. Like that. So if you've never seen the um, pistons used in that way, they can be used in that way. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so that's the uh, going up bit. Uh, going down on the other hand, we've got the button on the other side and this is something I did to make, make the... Um, set up easier. We have uh, the button to go down, another dropper with an iron ingot in it again, another hopper, and this does exactly the same thing, but we've got a redstone torch here, which is powering this line and this line of redstone out here, and these are both extending out uh, two sticky pistons, which are holding these pistons in place. And when you uh, hit this button, they retract momentarily and let you fall through. And you can see that happening over here. There we go. So that's all that's going on. We press a button to go up, and then up here, we press another button to go down. And all I'm doing, basically, is replicating this, mapping this block from this block here up about three blocks so that that becomes um, the block there. And then you do another floor above this. And um, you just bring all the redstone around and stack them on top of each other. It's actually, it sounds complex, it looks complex, but it's actually simpler than you might think. Obviously there's a few little gimmicks that you may need to pay attention to, like red, redstone repeaters here, why do I have these here, and these here, uh, and also why is there a stone slab here, and that's to do with the, um, <coughs> the stackability. And uh, we'll get into that when we go into building it, which we will do right away, because I am going to do a, a build tutorial for this. Uh, so without further ado, let's go and do that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to build this. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys how to build a single layer, just like that skeleton one there. Uh, and you guys should be able to map everything out yourselves. Um, it's not that hard to figure out, and you can always reference that, which I will come back to momentarily uh, if you need any assistance. So, this is the area that we're going to need. Um, the area that the redstone actually covers is a 5x8 uh, area like this. I apologize if this seems like I'm like I'm copying mumbo-jumbo style, but I do. 
I do adore his, his style. <laughs> it's very, very concise, and I'm trying to get that across here. But anyway, this is where the walls of your elevator are going to be, and this is going to be the entrance. These two blocks here are where your actual elevator going up and down are going to be. So, uh, in this chest I have a bunch of the blocks you're going to need. You're going to need both types of pistons, a dropper, a hopper, redstone repeater, comparator, dust, torch, and a button. Uh, I'm using two different types of stained clay for my redstone to keep them uh, color-coded, uh, and that's so that I uh, find it easier to look at when you're doing redstone. Stone slab of any kind, and then blocks to make up the wall and floor, and then I use iron ingots for putting items in the droppers. I'll just pretend they're like counterweights or something. But anyway, we're going to grab uh, some of this, and we'll uh, start work right away. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you know where your uh, buttons are going to be. So, we're going to put a block up here. This is where our up button is going to be. This is our ground floor. And when we push this button, we want to be pulled up at this point. So, what we want to do is we want to bring uh, a two blocks up here. We want to put two redstone repeaters on the back facing into the elevator. And then we're just going to hold shift and place two regular pistons facing downwards against those repeaters like that. Simple as that. Okay, so let's just get our redstoning blocks out. There we go. I'm going to want you. Okay, so on the back of this block that has the button on it, we're going to put a dropper facing this way, and then a hopper facing into the dropper. Once again, hold shift so that you don't interfa interface with the GUI. Uh, and it'll just put the uh, hopper facing back into the dropper. And you'll notice, if I put an iron ingot in here, when I push this button, you can't really see, but what's happening is the iron ingot's being pushed into the hopper and then straight back in. And we'll just show that by putting a block and a comparator. There you go. So it briefly lights up there. Now what I want to do is bring uh, our building block for the uh, up circuit up like this. So one, two, and then one, two. Redstone there, there, and there. And then one more repeater in that location there. And that is all you need for the up circuit. So now what happens if you push this button, the pistons uh, extend and they retract and they pull you up with them. Nice. Nice and simple. Okay, so now we need to build the, the down circuit, and this is going to be on the upper level, so we need to distinguish where our floor is going to be. This is designed for three block high ceilings, um, or as in a three block separation between the floor of one level and the floor of the next, uh, and I'm choosing to use half slabs to increase the headroom, so your total headroom in a floor is actually two and a half blocks, um, but you can obviously extend that if you want the... Um, the floors to be larger than the elevator, you might just have to do some fancy gimmicks um, with arranging the positions of some of these blocks. But I'm just going to put uh, two stone slabs there, uh, cobblestone slabs to show you where that's going to be. Um, so that's going to be the floor of the uh, the next level up, so the next floor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to position our down button, which is going to be on the other side, once again, one block up whoop, from uh, the, gra the floor here, and one block over from where the pistons are. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to place in our pistons which are going to be attached to these pistons. So we're going to bring our other colour of stained clay, so orange in this case, three blocks out to the edge, one, two, three, and just leave them like that. Then we're going to put sticky pistons facing inwards on each of those blocks. Now I know that it's on top of the hopper, that's actually um, not a problem. This is actually incredibly compact, I think I've managed to get it, um, for what it does. Uh, and the fact that a lot of this stuff seems to be touching doesn't actually affect it. Like, the piston and the hopper don't interact at all. Um, there are some blocks that would interact, and I've made some special allowances for how to fix those problems, which we'll see. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to bring this uh, orange stained clay, we want to bring it all the way around in a big U shape like this. Now, the next thing we want to do is replicate, as we did down here uh, with the dropper and the hopper, just stick uh, dropper facing facing uh, to the side on the back of the block with the button, hopper facing into it. Now we're going to put a block here and we're going to put our comparator on top of that and then we're going to put a block out from the front of that and put a redstone torch on top. Now uh, this isn't actually necessary for this level but I'm going to put a stone slab here and the reason for that um, is to stop the redstone torch here from activating a layer above it. And I'll show you what I mean over here. Here is our fully set up layering um, system here for the uh, four level, well, four levels in total, but three levels between each um, elevator here. And you can see that oh, the green is the going up circuit and the orange is the going down circuit and how they stack together. Now you can see here that I have a redstone torch which normally would power this block here, which meant that if this redstone torch 
wasn't there, this would always be powered and those pistons would always be extended and the system wouldn't work. However, if this is a stone a half slab like that, the redstone can still travel across it, but it won't actually transmit a signal from below. So you can safely put a torch under it without worrying about it activating the redstone on top. So that is why we're using a stone slab there. It's not 100% necessary for the bottom layer because there is, as you can see, no redstone torch underneath. But of course, if you're planning to expand downwards, because you can do that as well, then you may want to leave your options open. Okay, next up we need to place some redstone repeaters. And the positioning of these is fairly specific. We're going to need two here, like this, just in the middle of this four block run here and you leave these all at one tick, which is the default setting. Then we're going to go to this corner, we're going to place one there, go around the corner, and one there. And the reason for these is another interaction, because um, if you look down here, this piece of redstone dust here would activate the piece uh, and interact with the piece of redstone that would come around here if we didn't have the repeaters. And you can see what I mean again over here. This redstone dust from the going up circuit of the of the floor would interact with the redstone from the going down circuit if we didn't have them there. So they've been strategically placed to stop that happening. And then the reason that I have two repeaters here is to match the timing. So we have a total of a two tick delay before the pistons um, are opened up and you fall through the floor. So that's the reason for um, these, uh, these repeaters here. So now we're just going to fill in the redstone. So we want uh, pieces all across here. And now you've immediately realized the next part of the problem, which is that this redstone is interacting with this and uh, constantly extending those pistons there. So a simple solution to that, just put blocks on top of those pieces of redstone dust, and they no longer connect. And you can also see that in place over here, how these blocks are not actually got anything on top of them, but they are stopping this redstone dust from interacting with this. And it does help to know a little bit about how redstone dust um, interacts in its block form. Um, but you can kind of get the idea that if you put a block, a solid block, this does have to be a solid block, if it's like a half slab it can still transmit through, or glass or something, it has to be a non-transparent block um, that will not allow a signal to pass through like this, and then this will work. Alright, so there's uh, just a few things left to do. We now have both circuits up. Of course we need to remember to put an iron ingot in this dropper as well. Whoop, just one. Although I actually don't think it actually matters. And now we should be able to test when we press this button pistons open up and then drop you through and then that's pretty much all you need to do so when you build the next floor all you want to do is go up equal with your going down button you want to place place your going up button and then you just replicate this and just keep building upwards and it actually maps over fairly easily obviously I'll give you another look over here if you need um, to help understand how this works but it is actually fairly simple. It does use like a bit of advanced redstone, like hoppers and comparators and both types of pistons. But when it comes down to it, it's actually fairly simple. And there's it's mostly just repetition and understanding how that repetition works. But yeah, so now you can now all you'd have to do is uh, grab whatever block you're using for your um, wall materials and just fill in all around here to cover up the um, workings behind the elevator. And there you have it. We have our fully functional, uh, infinitely expandable 1x2 redstone elevator. Step in, push to go up, and then push to go down. And of course, if you want to make more floors, you just stack this same system right on top. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. It took me a, a while to develop this, but I think it actually works pretty well. And, um, yeah, I hope it has been informative enough that you guys will be able to make it yourselves, most importantly, without a doubt. Um, but, yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. So, uh, yeah, until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been AxelMC131, and I'll see you next time.